Hi everyone. Just reading a book from the 1800s uh, written by Edwin Johnson. Just want to read this. While writing English culture, Johnson prepared several short papers on sex and characters, British origins, English records, foundation legends of Oxford and Cambridge, biblical legends, biblical court geography, Gothic and Sacrican architecture and made notes for work on French culture, which is left unfinished. By the way of relaxation, he also wrote about this time a series of paper on Robert Browning, touching a few characteristic points in the personality and the art of the poet, a premier of elements of historic science, undertaken at the suggestion of Mr. Freud, was written in 1892, and a transition into English of the... From I can't quite say that word, I apologise. Of Father Harridan, copies of the Jesuits' work being scarce and no full translation from Latin existing. To various liberal and advanced thought publications, he contributed from time to time miscellaneous articles on some subjects written in more popular vein. These included chapters on English history, articles on Gibbon and the origin of Christianity, on the history of Nubus, and notes of the Jewish literature and Jews in Spain. Some of these papers have been reprinted in American periodicals. The Pauline Apostles re-studied and explained an account of the origin of New Testament writings and of the Protestant... Where are we? So, um, so re-study explained an account of the origin of the New Testament writings and the Protestant Reformation in Europe, issued in 1893, had a first circulation. In late, the late Mr. Artemot, Oriental scholar, met Johnson on several occasions to discuss the subject of chronology with him, and there is no doubt that Johnson would have produced a valuable work on calendars on chronological systems, but with his health breaking down, he was obliged to lay aside the mass of notes, the extracts which he had accumulated on this subject. This material was subsequently acquired by Mr. Arthur Buck. The Mysteries of Chronology, which appeared in the 1900s, was very largely based on the information which Johnson supplied. The suggestion, however, for the formation of a new era, the Victorian, was Mr. Arthur Mott's own. Beyond the occasional letter to a private correspondent, Johnson wrote a little more. His early and unpublished work, except that on Greek mythology and religion, was to some extent superseded by that containing the result of his latest discoveries and research. On his work on the whole, he has recorded his own feeling and impressions towards the end of the Pauline Epistles. It was, he writes, a very distressing curiosity that God me to undertake these investigations. In one respect, the result has been grievous disappointment because instead of discovering a solid basis of witness and accredited facts, I have found nothing but clear and irresistible evidence of schemes and devices of a secret literary society whose bold statements have again and again to so something doesn't sound right or writing sorry contradicted out of their own writings the things were not done in a corner Paul was made to say but they were done in a corner we have not followed cunningly devised fables the brother apostle is made to say and yet the whole system is one cunningly devised fables one trained like myself to believe in and define, defend these writings and to look upon the church as, ideally at least, a glorious institution free from spot, wrinkle, blemish or any such thing that cannot reflect upon these things without pain. By instinct and old affliction, my pace is among her servants or allies, but the duty of the literacy critic is no less serious and stern than that of the judge upon the bench, and my conscience as a critic compels me to condemn an institution which is stained and immaculate and deformed by complicity with so much of a falsehood and fraud to make what effort I can towards a new reformation. In the gentler days, it surely is not too much to hope that the church may resolve to turn down her falsified and antiquous pages and begin the chronicles of a new era. 
inscribed the records of her endeavours in the case of knowledge of truth of human love of records at the same time of the administration and gratitude of the world. May these things be. That, in brief, is the story of Johnson's literary work, of what he was in his own home, all his glorious, generous help to the poor students. I'm not permitted to speak. He got us to a degree and rarely spoke or wrote of himself or of his books. The modern interview was a person to avoid. If, he said, it was one of his latest utterances. If, in the future, if there are any inquiries about me, say, I live in my books. His books are, however, with one exception, in his personal. Johnson, the man, was greater than Johnson, the author. Some of his feelings and experiences may be found in the quest of Mr. East, some are given above. He was no dry as, dry as dust, no real clues, but eminently human, general by temperament, cheerful companion, and fond of society. Until his last illness, he was saved from being cast down by a large sense of humour, which one of his friends remarked had a kind of Charles Lamb flavour with the, without the mint sauce. Though feeling the cold criticism like St. John in his days, he was able, he was on the whole cheered with the kind of words meant to him unknown. He praised the candour, the humanity, the this, and the quality of the pages into which the thought and the struggle of the years have gone. One who did not feel able or profess to understand the tendency of his writings says, words would fail to record all the spiritual sympathies which were a living force in the character to the last, of his affectionate affinities, of his stubble suggestiveness in his conversation, of his power to make men look their own thoughts in the face, Many of his old students and friends would now be thinking, to those who knew the particular flavour of his humour, the quest of Mr. East was a full book of charm, in reality a long drawn out parable, depicting many silent features of the modern religious world, describing the search of the soul for Christ and true Christ. There are great pathos about his life, and the pain and difficulty associated with the cause he brought out more clearly his inner refinement. Well, even amid disabling suffering, he exercised the strain of attractiveness which led him into. I'll just go back and read this to you, okay? The author writes strongly, He has been over the ground. I have not, and I would not try to find another explanation. Theologies and ecclesiastical systems formulated by societies, councils, synods, have generally had their origin of individual speculation or belief. On the other hand, the intense expert de corps of the convent of monks went beyond anything that we can now realize and led the grave sins against truth and honesty, the forgeries of characters, bulls, and legal instruments of all kinds for the glorification of a monastery by its members were at last condoned only too frequently. It can be hardly be doubted that the scripturum of many religious houses must have been turned to very discreditable uses by unscrupulous and careful scribes with the conveyance, if not with the actual knowledge of the corruption. I can't say that word, sorry. For such things were not done in the corner. If the forgeries succeeded, and that they often did succeed, we know the monasteries got all the advantages of such the rascality. No inquiry was made, and it was tactically assumed there was so much gain, and the pride of our house was gratified. The end of justified the means, Dr. Jessop coming on the fires and the other essays, subject of literary. So, yeah, it's it's a really interesting read. I just wanted to share it quickly. Apologise, my eyes are playing up. I break my glasses. It's really hard to see at the moment, so I apologise. Okay, so i just share here. The main results of Johnson researches as recorded in his printed writings are briefly these. That the history of Europe, especially ecclesiastical history, is founded largely upon the assumption as well as the upon tradition, a legend, an era of the bi bi biographies of the real person being idealized, that the Hebrew and Christian scriptures are prophetic in character, and that there was no constituted Christian church before the 11th century of our era, 800 years ago, that the other part, that the larger part of the so-called Middle Ages is an imaginary or non-existent period, 
the modern period beginning soon after breaking up of the old Roman Empire. So that's the Vatican too. So the when the golden age was in place, it was everything was running great, but then come all the corruption with the fall. Golden age is over and it's Satan's world. You can tell it's Satan's world. We are therefore not so far removed in time from the Greeks and the Romans as our chronological tables teaches. Further, Johnson has traced our ecclesiastical system backwards to the Arab Arabians, Arabians, sorry, who owe nothing whatever to Latin or Greek Christianity. This indebtedness began in the opposite direction. Christianity, in some form, was, however, anterior to all these systems. There was no, there are no wild theories to be summarily rejected. Though some of the statements may seem too bold or too arbitrary, the reader will find the author's arguments quite intelligible and not unreasonable. Many have discovered unexpectable anomalies and discrepancies in their reading of history. In Johnson's printing re printed re writings, they will, I think, find a solution of the difficulties as an explanation of many things here or through, imperfectly and wholly misunderstood, especially of the matters in relation to our system of chronologically. See, even the people were confused back then. Our own system of chronologically being in pageant, I once asked that he should make some attempt towards reconstruction. The notes, hang on, I read that wrong. Our own systems are chronologically being purged. I once asked the author, how do we stand in relation to other systems, and suggested that he should make an attempt towards a reconstruction. The notes and the memorabilia utilised by Mr. Arpenbot may not, may have been a step in the direction indicated. Okay, so that was a step in trying to work this timeline out. So back then in the 1800s, so they were even questioning it. So the following pages I endeavoured to bring together some of these anomalies noticed in my own reading it is given easily, but easily be supplemented by many more in support of the author's arguments. The saying that geography and chronologically are the two eyes of history has become so hackneyed in an expression that we have to forget the rational mind of the observer behind them. Even careful historians ride long stretches of a thousand and fifteen hundred years as if historical time was unlimited. The average educated person so easily in imagination transfers himself from continent to continent, from century to century, and speaks or writes of this or that as having to happen in the second or the seventh or the nineteenth or any intervening century as if time had been reckoned in all this manner throughout the era. Speaking generally, no ancient era was in use or in force from its commencement, nor till long afterwards the term Anno Domino, the reckoning backwards to the supposed beginning of the era, has been in general use less than 400 years. That would bring it back to the 1600s with around 1666 with the birth certificates in Markia Beast where you sold and traded on your birth certificate and your identification and all of the, the courts and the laws are all Roman. So before that time reckoning was by the reigns of kings and princes and popes indeed, our acts of parliament are still dated by the year of the reign of the king. Inscriptions and manuscriptions when undated are allocated to particular centuries by a paragraphical expert who asserts the dates from the language or the contents or the style of the calligraphy which may perhaps have been done to the caprice of the writers. Accordingly, when we meet with statements that any, like any Christian document, belongs to the period between the 2nd and the 10th century, we may assume that the date is given as merely conjunctural. Too much emphasis cannot be, cannot therefore be laid upon the subject of chronologically, for upon it rests the credibility and authenticity of church records and the true date of the Christian church's foundation. Like other ecclesiastical errors, the Christian era has been much exaggerated and antedated, a chronological tale being necessary. A Danaeus Exedrus was found. A scheme of 14 or 15 anterior centuries being laid down Christian historians like Christian geographers who, with average pictures, filled their maps and oh, uninhabited downs, placed elephants for want our towns. Very soon, 
filled up vacant plain with names and edifying deeds of ecclesiastical princes, churchmen, saints, or of those supposed opponents. So in other words, the Masons or the Rosicrucians, which was all the Jacobsons is what they were known of back then. Uh, they didn't really use the Illuminati because the Illuminati went underground. For history to the Christian writers was the elegy rather than a science of observation or reasoning. Glancing over the period between the 4th and the 11th centuries, we see that it is spaced out with Christian and ecclesiastical matters, or of secular matter which interests the church. For purely secular names, we look in vain between Galen and Poltemy, the second and the Arabians of the ninth. There is a blank. Speaking of Poltemy, excuse me for apologizing for saying that wrong, one is reminded that his geography of the 2nd and that of the 13th centuries are almost alike. The 11th centuries of the Eastern Empire, from Constantine to the fall of Constantinople, are filled up by the Byzantine historians of unbroken chain. Their writings form part of the world's annals, which has been long which has been held up to contempt as record of a thousand years of moral and political emptiness. So there you go, one thousand years. So in the 1800s they're writing it. So I reckon it's roughly 1,300 years because when it happened it changed the age of Taurus by around 250 to 300 years, 280 years. The glowing pen of a gibbon has failed to create an interest in the lives and deeds of long succession of bloodthirsty tyrants and impotent debaters. Finlay and Freeman will dwell upon the nobler characteristics of the period, the deeds of the Belarusians, Hercules, Leos, the Euthyrians, and the other individuals largely idealized and are of certain date. But while we read, we cannot lose sight of the scribes who think the same thoughts and write the same language, which does not alter in a thousand years. And that is a good point. The language does not alter. I have been looking at languages. You know, the, the Babylon people were confused. And the languages, it was all, some of the stuff for a long time, but just doesn't change. So they all use the same pen and ink throughout these chronicles of corruption, calamity, crime, supposed to be incident to decaying empire, to leave no link is lost. The long drawn out story as we have it was probably written after the Turks had entered into position. So is that after Tartaria fell, like the golden age was in place and you know it was one big place and they came in. Writing of another supposed Christian people, the Ethiopians, Gibbon says of them, they slept near a thousand years, forgetful of the world by whom they were forgotten. Christian Coptic contrasts strongly with old Coptic of China, known by, known to the Romans. It may be said as much reasons as the Abyssins, that she was also forgotten by the empire for a similar period. We have no notices of China between the time or Aria and Potomi and missions of Capriti in 1246. But it's like my family history, it only goes back to the 1100s. It's as far back as on my dad's side, it's as far, like I don't know about my mum's side, but on my dad's side, everything's been dated back to the 1100s. They've tracked everyone down, it's in a massive book. Okay, so, but there are seemingly references in Chinese periods to the Roman Empire at a comparatively recent period when, according to Orthodox Christian chronologically, it had, lo it had been long been dead and buried. In India, as in China, chronologically it is an unsettled state. India has no history properly, properly so-called Balfour, the Mahabadean invasion in the 13th century. No one ever... Not one of her races or small nationalities ever kept a chronicle. A learned philographer notices the absence of written memorials of literature or data by which to trace the current popular speech during the Dark Age or the long nine, night of nine centuries. Wow, is that what they called it? The curtain falls on Indian language is about the first century and does not rise again until the tenth. I very much doubt, he continues, 
Whether the intervening space will ever be filled up, the materials seem to be lost forever. Buddhism is our only chance, there seems to be no more to hope for. And those nine centuries must remain forever sealed, forever a sealed book. This state of things is reported of a country to which Europe is indebted for her figures and arithmetic for some of her religious, oh, I can't quite say that, sorry, associates, uh, sophilos, no, I can't even say it. Is that the theodites? Horus? I, I can't quite say them, I apologise. Had been alluded to show how immensely superior to the position of the New Testament. Does this not tend to rather show its more recent origin? Is there, if there had been a careful regard for the New Testament documents, how is it that the Old Testament documents were not preserved? That the New Testament writings are more recent than the classical is evident by the Papalopes. The most valuable texts of classical authors are overwritten by Syriac and Greek Christian texts. Christian texts underlying classical texts are of late date. It came to Rome itself. The Eternal City is her own witness. In the rise of Christianism, Johnson has con commented on the absence of authentic, authentic papal coins. Yeah, that's true. Um, older than the 12th century, while Mr. Arpenthot, after a search through the museums of Europe, came to the decision that there are no authentic papal records earlier than A.D. 1198. The historians of architect mark the 11th and 12th centuries as the commencement of Catholic building in Italy, France and England. There are no earlier remains of any ecclesiastical buildings in this country, and on the continent they succeeded the Rome temples and the palaces without a break. The latest editor of Gibbon tells us that the study of the Byzantine architecture has not yet begun. Forty years ago, emirate historian and statesman happily still with us observed that the modern, the modern traveller after his first few days in Rome begins to seek for relics of 1,200 years that lie between Constantine and Pope Julius II, where he asked, Is Rome of the Middle Age? To this question, the writer adds, There is no answer. The history of the Holy Roman Empire is again in Rome. As I write in April 1903, attending a Congress of Historians, does Mr. Price see more today than he saw during his former visit? I think not, for the late Mr. Freeman was similarly impressed. Aware of the unity and the unity of history, he noted that in Rome, a gap, a wider gulf between the great periods of history than can be found anywhere else. A yawning gap indeed. And at the first glance of Rome, it seems to be rich in monuments of early days of her emperors and of her later days of her pontiffs and have little to show for other intermediate age. An intelligent writer, uh, reader will remind me that underground there are witnesses, the catacombs, he may ask, of Christian mitres and the ten great persecutions. The answer to this question is an easy one. The catacombs are the graveyards of the Roman people. The story of persecutions of anybody of the believers in the capital of the Roman world, the government and rule of which was most free and tolerant known to us, is a liberal and inconvincible that Marcus Aurelius, the most perfect man that ever lived, should have permitted the torment and murder of Christian men and women for a belief as harmless as his own is a charge for which there is no evidence, and it must be dismissed in the catacombs disused. Early in the 5th and reopened towards the end of the 16th century, and every major capital city of the world has these catacombs. Moscow has them, England has them, um, the Vatican has them, the Rome, um, the places in Romania and and all, all different places have these catacombs. So this 16th century, some writers who give us incredible church history see in the cross the other Roman and pre-Roman symbols, emblems of Christianity, in the innumerable inscriptions BM, which to those who have sorrow for the departed stood for Bernie Marati or Bono Memorize equivalent to our own blessed or affectionate memory. I apologize for saying that wrong. 
They saw another meeting and some unexplained manner. These initials were taken to mean Blessed Mater. Oh, see how history just gets changed? And extending over long periods, they grew up to the belief in the ten great persecutions. Some of the Christian literature may have been composed as themes for discussion and disputation. Disputes using assumed names merging themselves into the sort of nirvana like the Buddhist writers. This would explain the origin of much of the prophetic writing, the authors little suspe suspecting that in after ages it would be taken as inspired. Some of the works of St. Augustine would come into this category. One man at a time could scarcely live, have written all that is now attributed to him. The Confessions is not an autobiography but a spiritual manual. Its style is that of the imitation of Christ of the 14th or the 15th century, he reckons, and the progress of Augustine. From Neopaleotism through Mechanicism into Christianity is a typical of the growth of Christianity itself. In the city of God, designed to inaugurate a new order of things, the writer brought to into clear light the distinction between the kingdoms of greed and the power, and that of the righteousness and the truth as far as he knew it. Edification rather than the truth must be looked into. Ecclesiastical writings, the scribes of that period wrote, not for the critical or sceptical age in the distinct future, in the separum they could take conquests only of such material as they collected in their neighbourhood, legendary or traditional or the oriental theological literature, the wild and the marvellous, the incredible, not infrequently the independent and the edified, or the abused European peoples from the 12th to the 16th century. The noble class of men in the monasteries lived in a sense a beautiful life, which could have, en which could have ended only in a state of nirvana. Believing in the transitionists of the world, their hope was fixed upon another. This one, they argued, was very evil. The time was waxing late. Their duty was, they thought, to be sober and keep vigil, for the judge was at the gate. So, it goes on about Jews in China. I'll leave a link in the descriptions. It's sort of one of these ones where you start reading and you can't stop reading. Just have a look at the bottom footnotes here. There is a story of catacombs having been visited in the 4th century by St. Jerome when a boy. He used to make the circuit of the sepulchre of the apostles and martyrs on Sundays. But Jerome writes like a 16th century scholar. More when he translated the Old Testament used the 16th century signs for punctuation a thousand years before they came into general use. Oh yeah, punctuation, yeah. So people don't seem to be picking up on these little differences and it's not being said if it is. It is also to be noted that some of his words are a late period and written over older authors' palimpsest. So that's some way to look at the way the words have been written too, isn't it? Isaac Taylor in his Ancient Christianity, 1840, traced monarchism to India. I apologise for saying this wrong. In Buddhism, is believed to have been established itself in Alexandria. Jerusalem was an anterior to Christianity and open to Indian influence. Romanticism, Nestorianism, and, well, I can't even say these, all have one source and are deprived from Brahmanism and Buddhism. The word paradise and the idea of the resurrection are Persian in their origin. The Magi or the Pharisees claim the Ab Abraham as their prophet and reformer and he is identified with Zoroaster and Mohammedan writings. Mohammedanism is indebted to the Zen Devesta, but not to the Christian scriptures. The latter is Johnson and Shaw and is indebted to the Quran. We do not find a single ceremony or doctrine of Islam in the smallest degree moulded, even tingled, tingled by the particular tense tenets of Christianity. 
There is no evidence that Muhammad had any practic practical acquaintance with Old or New Testament scriptures. Self, Faith of Islam, 1838. The Quran knows nothing of Paul or his doctrines. The Quran recognizes Jesus as the divine messenger and we've been found to approach more closely to the doctrine of Jesus than of those of Paul, Ernest de Bunsen, in 1889. This again confirms Johnson in his solution of the enigma of the Pauline teachings in the New Testament. So it's pretty interesting. As I said, it's just hard to stop reading once you start reading. You sort of don't want to stop because we know our history has been changed and something's not right. You know, they talk about tall, white, um, red-headed white people in China. That's what they talk about. And that's the thing about Hebrew. Hebrew disappeared for a time. The Hebrews were a sect among the Arabs in Spain. The forgery of Jew Jewish coins. Okay. I'll just read the bottom footnotes here. So on a footnote, we've got there's no satisfactory account of ancient Jewish chronological system and the modern Jewish era was not known before the 14th century. Wow. The situation of the scripture, scripture shepherd has always been a matter of uncertainty and cannot even be said and settled. On the Sepharim, Ashkenazim, German and Polish Jews and Jewish sects, Pharisees, See Wolf Travels. Servitus was not even original in this at his trial at 1553. He acknowledged that he quoted from another author, but incautiously for himself added that the remark on Palestine in the poverty of 1553 contained nothing that was true. Wow. The tenant Condor believed to be both to be genuine, yet he tells us that. The forgery of Jew Jewish coins continued actively to be pursued in Palestine at Sidon, Phoenician Antiquities, Malbite, Pottery, etc. at Nabonus, Sumerian Rolls, Synagogue Prayer Books, Stepped in Coffee Grounds, Assumed an Age, of about 3,000 years in a space of three weeks, yeah. Coffee dyed paper, we did that as a kid in school to make it look like. On the Moabite stone, it's got this, it's something about inscriptions. So, yeah. Phoenicia is current day Lebanon, too. I just wanted to share that. Oh, that's interesting. More language. The earliest European Arabic scholars claim for Arabic and its study was the only true road to understanding of Hebrew. The word Hebrew has never been found in the early monuments of other, that's interesting, Eastern nations. Not one Hebrew inscription of the age of Jewish monarchy has come down to us. For more than 300 years, the holy sites, the church of the holy sepulchre, the Golgothia, have been characterized as fraud, scandalous cheats and forgeries. A late traveler has recorded his conviction that the giant cities in Bashan are an illusion. It is not of old, but of Antonines, not of Israel, but of sacred conquest, that he is reminded. But we have Josephus, suggests the reader, the antiquities of the Jews is a compilation of from the Oriental Chronicles, the narrative of the wars of the Jews, a piece of fiction which carries on every page its refutation of history, like the works of St. Augustine, Lanatus, and others of the fraternity that Joseph is in, the, is in Greek. In one place, the writer says that the things told by the Jews who surrounded in the siege of Jerusalem, only he understood. The story has no special local colouring and may be re reminiscent 
of the period of the Crusades, the wars between the East and West, not for a cross or a sceptre, but for the rule of the world. The Church of Rome, in the words of Johnson, was founded in a time of darkness, wrath and dismay, and the sole apology for the misdeeds of the founders of her temporal sway lies in the fact that it was at a time when violence alone reigned in the earth. The, this just sounds to me when the devil was loosed and the golden age is over. To me, like, you hear of the Stone Age and the Middle Ages and then the Renaissance, and I noticed after I went through school that the school stopped teaching about the Renaissance period and talking about Dark Ages, and it's not even taught in schools anymore. Coming now to the subject of the present volume, the nearest of Rome to has been us has been noted by other writers. While there are no Christian inscriptions or remind, remains of Christian art or even Christian architecture in this old country, older than the 11th century, Roman inscription abound, especially inscriptions and in honor of Mothra, the symbols which have found their way into Christianity. There is a legend that the Cathedral of St. Paul in London is erected on the site of the Temple of Diana. There you go, I didn't know that. As late as the time of Elizabeth, a ceremony of the offering of a doe, or a buck and a doe, at the high altar on the day of the conversion of St. Paul was observed. <gasps> And men as were held upon the due performance of this service when the Orientals entered Europe. The Roman legions were no doubt withdrawn. Their wives, their families probably remained in Britain, and their descendants are with us among, along with Roman laws and observances. The remembrance and traditions are found in the bead and the other writings, the remains of the roads, and camps and villas, the Latin inscriptions, the large finds of Roman coins, all indicate the comparative nearness of the Roman Empire. On the other hand, Campbell long ago pointed out that the narrative of Saxon immigration and settlement in England are unhistorical. So you hear about the Saxons, the Normans, or the Throughout the saga literature describing the expedition of the Northmen to the England, not a single instance is mentioned of their coming in contact with people called Saxons. The Northmen, or the Sioux ones, are mentioned by Tatticus, not afterwards, till the ninth century. This hatus has been filled up with the apocryphal or Saxon history. The story of the Danes in the Chronicles is as late as little trustworthy as that of the Saxons. Now we know that the Danes are related to the English. You know, all of the Europe kings, uh, queens, are uh, all related. So, that, that's pretty much true. This was written in the 1800s, 1880s, and 2021, it, it seems to be true. Um, bears the appearance of contradiction, the confusion, and regards to the names of people. In fact, the truth is that the Teutonic or the Scandinavian element was the, the century before the arrival of the Roman century says in the Anglo Saxon letters are the sixteenth century invent, invention, and that is impossible to trace the study of them higher than the Elizabethan scholars or hint of their being in existence before the time of Henry the Eighth. It is commonly supposed that the days of the weaker Anglo Saxon they were introduced by the Romans who borrowed them from the Egyptians. There you go. The stories of brute and long succession of British kings before the Romans of Joseph Arimathea at Gastonbury have been related to the storehouse of fable. The histories and the chronicles of the Gilders, Ninnus, Geoffrey of the Malamouth, Essa, Ingolf of Goyland, and other writers in English history have been for a long time, accounted surplus documents. William of Mansonbury picked up his histories from the time of Bede, says Aubrey, but of old songs, the history of Bede who copied Ninus is still accepted as authentic and authentic in his memory held in veneration. He is also credited with the knowledge of Arabic and old Oriental history and science. Gerbert, Pope Sir the two who died in 1003, Two centuries after the supposed period of Bede is said to have been the first European student of Arabic learning. So we have a Pope that learns Arabic and then the supposed 
Islam in the world gets comes out. It is not possible to enter into elaborate arguments in the short essay, but I may point out some of the anomalies in our history. Our later historians do not now repeat with confidence the extraordinary stories of Cree the poachers when the flower of the French armies were destroyed with the loss of only a few English archers and footmen, or that retaliatory French story of burning of the Joan of Arc by the English. We must remember, however, that upon the writers of these stories, much of our early history is founded. The story of Norman conquest originally occupied a poem written 50 years after the event. The accreditations which have since gathered around it now fill five stout volumes for William's reign and two additional for his son's Rufus. The combatants at the Battle of Hastings are variously estimated at from 60,000 to 1 or 50,000, of whom half were slain. The site of the battlefield is shown, but where are the remains? Doomsday Book is supposed to be of the same period. What collateral evidence is there of such as a ponderous and voluminous work that could have been compiled at this period? Usually we are dependent upon legends and traditions preserved for... Uh, Usually we are dependent upon legends and traditions of history. Here we have records without any legends or traditions preserved for 800 years, perfect and in beautiful condition. It is no doubt authentic work, but is that the true day? Magna, Magna Carta? Magna Charta. Yeah. Magna Charta, there you go. Supposed to be 200 years later is scarcely readable. Bracton, who is said to have died in 1268, 50 years later the date of the Magna Charta, knows nothing of it. There is no reference to it before the times of James I or Charles I when it was found. <laughs> so these kings, Charles I, all these don't know of the Magna Carta. It's supposed to be around, okay. They don't talk about it. This is what I mean, people don't cross-reference history and it's just buried. Johnson draws attention to various curious facts, observed Mr. Thor Rogers in the handwriting of the English medieval records. Styles of writing in the four short and successive reigns all differ. The changes are sudden and almost simultaneous. There are what is still more extraordinary, sudden changes in the economy of agriculture. Such changes appear to be due to, as Johnson remarks, to art and craft in the scribes. The conventional histories tell us that when Europe was in a dark age, ministries sent out from civilised and culturalised cultivated island to Scotland, Wales, England, Scandinavia, and other countries, taking with them the knowledge and the faith of the art. Miscu Raskin was a believer in this. In the 8th century, he writes, Ireland possessed a school of art in her manuscripts and scripture, which in many of its qualities, apparently, in all essential qualities of decorative inventation, was quite without a rival, seemingly as if it might have advanced to the highest triumphs in architecture and painting. But, he continues, there was one fatal flaw in this nature by which it was stayed and stayed with the conspicuous of the pause to which there is no parallel. The cause of that arrest, that master explains the national characteristics. The staying, the staying or the arrest of us is a mistake. The dates must be wrong. The famous book of Kells and M.S. copy of the Gospels, upon which Miss Graskin founded his remarks, which is said to have been belonged to St. Columbian, 6th century, Found of the monasteries of Ida and Linusfar is perhaps the most beautiful book in the world, the work rather of an angelic than human skill, and the jewel book is a splendid binding of gold set with precious stones are both credited to that early period. The story of Celtic art in Ireland, of Celtic art everywhere, 1200 years ago is a fable. St. Columbian as well as St. Patrick were ideals. The imagination of 15th and 16th century writers in the Book of Kells and the Durham Book doubtless being to the time of the monasteries to appear to repose uh, and of luxury. The same remark applies to the other manuscripts of supposed early day. It's commonly assumed that universities were the offsprings of the religious bodies. Our chief institutes of learning at Cambridge and Oxford were in all probability, in existence before the arrival of any Christian order in England. Shakespeare and other writers were doubtless reflected. So Shakespeare was a Freemason. The names but a disguise, the playwright is merely spoken, but 
of those who would have been sent to the tower of the block if they had expressed their opinions openly. And that's right. There's no person that would write about that stuff. Their head would be chopped off. So I'm going to have a break. Um, I'm just going to leave the rest with you guys. It's it's something I'm just not going to be able to stop reading. I just want to share this with you. It's very interesting. Please don't get offended. Um, just working out the time where we fit. Okay, central co concepts of new chronologically de derived from the ideas of Russian scholar Nikolai Malkos, although work by French scholar Jean Harridan can be viewed as early predecessor. New chronology is most commonly associated with ma Russian mathematician Anthony from Morocco. I, I apologize for saying this wrong. Although published works on the subject are actually a collaboration between. Okay. It contains a risk reconstruction and an alternate chronological, radically shorter than the standard historical timeline because all ancient history is folded into the Middle Ages, according to his claims. The written history of humankind goes only far back as AD 800. There is almost no information of events between 800 to 1000. And most known historical events took place in AD 1000 to 1500. It's rejected by the mainstream historians and is inconsistent with absolute and relative dating techniques used in the white scholarly community. It's considered to be pseudoscientific. I mean, we know they, they only changed the calendars not that long ago. So this is the bloke I've been re reading about. So Krishna was largely inverted. No, well, I read that wrong by apologies. So I'll leave a link in the description for these. Thanks for watching. Wherever you are in the world. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good night, bye-bye.